Welcome to Modern Medicine with Doc Moylan. It's a pleasure this evening to introduce to our audience Dr. Nalini Mehta, who is a radiation oncologist with board certification, but she also brings to our field some special areas of expertise that we're going to talk about uh, tonight. But uh, of course, well, thanks for having me. Well, again, it's always a, a pleasure. Now, um, we've been friends and colleagues for a number of years. Could you uh, tell the audience um, how you came to come uh, be uh, schooled in radiation oncology? Okay, well, I finished my medical school, uh, training in, uh, at University of Bombay in uh, India, in Bombay, then Mumbai now. Yeah. And then I came to this country and did my residency at uh, Thomas Jefferson University. That's pretty With much Dr. when Moore. our uh, yep. paths crossed. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to refer to the gentleman uh, behind me here. This is a uh, bust that was crafted by one of our local artisans, uh, Mr. Marty Heffron. And I have to admit it's a pretty good likeness of Dr. Simon, Simon Kramer. Kramer. And again, we're being filmed here at the Simon Kramer Cancer Institute. But what were your impressions of Dr. Kramer? in those formative years after you came to the United States? Uh, Dr. Kramer was extremely compassionate, great teacher, very patient with all new residents like myself. <laughs> and uh, just uh, almost was uh, father of radiation oncology in this I'd country. Say that's a fitting title for Dr. Kramer. Yes, it is. Um, well, you finished up your uh, residency and then you migrated across town mm -hmm. to North Broad Street, uh, Temple University. Tell us about your uh, experience at Temple. Well, I was uh, a faculty at Temple, uh, assistant professor, and also um, for about a year acting director. And uh, was faculty for approximately six or seven years. Then decided to go into private practice. Yes. And interestingly, now I'm back at Fox Chase Temple University. So it's almost like a full circle. Well, it's, you know, uh, when Dr. Kramer put together the uh, clinical service at Jefferson, mm -hmm. there were firms. Now, that was a term that was used in the English system of yep. training. And there was the genitourinary uh, firm or prostate mm -hmm. cancer bladder. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was uh, assigned to the lung cancer firm. That's correct. But uh, it seems that now you've kind of gravitated back to the... Uh, prostate firm. Yes, I have. Tell us uh, what you do down at Fox Chase. At Fox Chase, um, I uh, treat prostate cancers as well as other GU cancers, uh, but mainly prostate cancer with uh, mainly 95% uh, of our patients are treated with external radiation, some with seed, Im uh, seed implantation of, uh, with iodine, radioactive seeds. And there's a small percentage that we have started doing uh, systemic radiation or intravenous radioactive injections uh, for gentlemen with prostate cancer whose cancer has become hormone refractory and they have a stage four bone metastasis. Well, uh, that will be our main topic, topic. Uh, for discussion today. Mm -hmm. But uh, what you're referring to is a product called Zofigo. Zofigo. Spelled with an X. Correct. Zofigo. Zofigo. And it's a radioactive radium 223. 223. What is special about that? Because for years, uh, we've had available in the armamentarium against prostate cancer when it's spread to bone uh, different radioisotopes. How Correct. is Zofigo different? Okay. Uh, what we used to do be, uh, use before uh, was uh, either strontium or sumerium. And the difference is tremendous. With strontium and sumerium, they did get bone, bone relief. There was no survival benefit. And they did, it did lower their blood count, especially platelets, quite a bit. And they ended, ended up needing perfusion, you know, uh, perfusion. Transfusion. Uh, transfusion perfusion. or perfusion with platelets. Yeah. Uh, with Zofigo, uh, first of all, this is the first uh, radioactive administration for metastatic prostate cancer 
that emits alpha particle. Now, what the heck is an alpha particle for us unschooled uh, people here and not you, <laughs> yeah, non-technical uh, audience? Uh, well, alpha. There are um, there is alpha particle, beta particle, gamma particle. Alpha particle are very superficial. Uh, they their length is short. So what you can do is it's almost like you can uh, treat a certain area. And then just a couple of millimeters beyond that, the dose goes down to practically nothing. So you're saving or you're protecting a lot of normal st structures surrounding it. In the, in the bone marrow the bone. specifically. And especially with Zofigo with the alpha particle, it, it's a dichloride. So it does seek out and goes to the bone and the bo and osteoblast or the bone cancer cells for, from the prostate. and. Um, it destroys the the cancer cells in the in the in the bone from prostate cancer. Now, while it does that very well, uh, very we were all very pleasantly surprised that it's the only radioactive material for prostate cancer that actually increased the survival. The survival for stage four prostate cancer with with bone mets is kind, roughly median survival is eleven point some five months and this increased it to close to 15 months. Well I think it's important to distinguish that uh, prostate cancer when it metastasizes the bone not a good thing that's stage Correct. four Correct. or it could be an earlier stage and then it recurs in the bone uh, not a good thing but uh, the first line of defense here would be the hormone hormones. therapy. Hormones are and, the gold standards. Yeah, and this this particular product, at least right now, Zofigo, is approved for people that are men in which the hormones have stopped working. Correct. How, how would they know that it stopped uh, working? Okay. What, uh, what tests could be done well, or whatever? Uh, when the hormones start stop working, the PSA will go up. Uh, so that's now one... Let, let's even go back to what the heck's a PSA. Okay. PSA is, uh, is, is, uh, is a blood test that measures prostatic specific antigen and normal prostate cells do secrete PSA um, and that's why um, when as a screening when you do PSA test depending on on the age of men but on an average up to four uh, is uh, considered normal. normal and someone who's in their 80s up to six could be considered normal uh, someone who's African-American even 2.5 might be questionably uh, higher considered abnormal. Uh, so when the hormones stop working, your PSA starts to go up. And also as far as symptoms, these bone mats do start to cause either frank symptoms of pain. Pain. Um, if it's in the spinal canal, they can cause uh, weakness, paralysis, bowel bladder loss problems. Um, but also sometimes there are subtle symptoms. Like a patient would uh, go to their physicians and say, you know, I used to move fast, I used to climb stairs, now I'm avoiding them. I can't uh, move that fast, I'm tired, my posture has gotten worse. Uh, these are the subtle symptoms that the... Or these sound like symptoms that um one might contribute or attribute to contribute getting to it older, getting exactly. older or whatever. And it's a shame that, you know, there are some physicians still might say, oh, it's, you know, what do you expect you're getting older? Yeah. And but uh, it's important to recognize the, the, these because uh, that's an eligibility criteria. Correct. That's this this uh, particular treatment, the Zofigo, frightfully expensive as all new correct. technologies okay, are. Yes. Yeah. So you have to qualify for it through your insurance company. So, uh, but uh, how about uh, blood counts? What kind of blood counts do they need to qualify? Okay, uh, in order to qualify, um, their blood has to be fairly stable. The hemoglobin should be 10 gram or higher. White count should be uh, around 4,000. Platelet should be around 100 to 125,000. And once this is done, uh, they do qualify that they can receive Zofigo. Uh, fortunately, our office or most offices will make sure and get pre-certification from the insurance sure. to make sure that it's, uh, it's covered.
Now, uh, there's another test that the manufacturer talks about, the alkaline, alkaline phosphatase. phosphatase. Can you tell us what the yes. utility for th uh, that is? Now, alkaline phosphatase would be elevated when any cancer goes to the bone, and especially in a prostate cancer with osteoblastic meds, it does go up significantly higher. And uh, that's how we know that uh, uh, this person is becoming hormone refractory. Uh, the micrometastasis in the bone may be getting a little faster and a little heavier and stronger. Lenny, we're going to take a commercial uh, break now. Okay. But when we come back, I'd like to explore your personal experience with this drug over the last several years at Fox Chase. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the launch of a similar program here at the Simon Kramer Cancer Institute that you will be spearheading. Yeah. Okay, great. Welcome back to Modern Medicine with Doc Moylan. Our special guest today is Dr. Nalini Mehta, who is uh, with us from the Fox Chase Cancer Center, where she is a specialist in prostate cancer. And we're talking about an exciting new therapy called Zofigo, which is radioactive radium-223, an alpha part particle emitter, which seems to be safer than a lot of the previous therapies. And just to summarize, it, um, it was the first isotope to convey a survival advantage in patients. Correct. A double-blind study, which is kind of the gold standard for uh, any kind of uh, yeah, it was randomized, Al Simca but study. Half half the people got a placebo, mm -hmm. which is a sugar pill or a sugar injection, injection. and the other got the active Correct. agent. And on the average, there was a four month improvement uh, in the, the uh, survival. Survival benefit, yeah. which sort of translates into. What kind of percentages are we talking about? About a 30% improvement. A reduction in uh, mortality or Risk death mentality. from prostate cancer. That, that's, that's wonderful. That's so we, uh, for the first time, we have in patients that have uh, escaped control of the hormone therapy, mm -hmm. something that can improve their not only quality of life, but their length of life. So th this is very exciting. And I'm happy to announce to our viewers that you have accepted the position as the director of systemic radiation therapy here at the Simon Kramer Cancer Institute, effective immediately. Any, any chance of working with you, I would never pass it up. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks for the kind words. Well, you, you and I have been Friend. studying this together for 40 plus years. I'm now, aging us. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've been working with it just, it was proved what three years ago or so, and you started working with it right away. Right away, right about four or five mo months after FDA approved it, it took us a while to get you know the equipment together, and we started uh, doing them about uh, about two and a, two two years ago or so. Yeah, yeah roughly. Well, in the same way, we saw the benefit mm -hmm. here. We've yep. been gearing up for it, but uh, licenses through the Correct. Department of. Mm -hmm. uh, environmental protection, radiation branch, et cetera. So we've got all our paperwork in place, and again, we'll uh, be bringing you in to deliver the first mm -hmm. uh, injection. But yep, we're if, ready you, to go. if you say a person could benefit from this, and again, they might have some mild symptoms of bone pain, uh, their blood counts are adequate, uh, what's the course of um, Zofigo. How many injections and how often do they get it? Please uh, tell us the logistics of uh, it. They get six injections, one injection every four weeks. And it's a very simple procedure. Uh, the isotope is delivered the day before. Uh, it, uh, you send them, you, you do order them about uh, a week, five to seven days prior to your injection date. And you send them the weight of the patient and they calculate it's 1.49 a millicury per kilogram of body weight. And it comes uh, ready in the syringe. Once it comes here, um, our physics uh, department will again do a test to make sure that that's exactly the yeah, amount say, yeah. is there. And then as far as injecting it, it's a uh, patient can, when patient comes in, they can eat breakfast, lunch, depending on what time it is. They can take all their other medication. And um, we, it takes about a one-minute injection. We do give them a 
since we have started the IV to inject it, we sort of wash off or uh, clear the syringe with uh, 15, 20 cc of saline twice so that they get every last drop of Zofigo in, in their body. Afterwards, uh, they can leave in a few minutes. You don't have to put Monit them in recovery? No, and, not uh, at all. They, you okay. don't have to check their vital signs. Um, they can leave, they can go back to work, they can go shopping, they can go out to eat. Uh, there are just few precautions once we do tell them just to be on the safe side. Uh, they should flush the toilet twice after oh, so it's excreted in the urine or the feces? mainly mainly in the fecal material it is, okay and a little bit in the excreted in the urine uh, they flush the toilet twice um, if there is a spillage of urine or fecal material we tell them to do the laundry separately and try and do the laundry immediately uh, there are no restrictions of uh, being you know n near or in the same room with pregnant women or children this is often a common question because I do radioactive mm -hmm. seed implants in which the patients are being treated with uh, gamma rays, basically, uh, which are much more penetrating. penetrating. And they want to know if, if their grandchildren visit, can they uh, hug them, kiss them? What, what do you tell them? Uh, there are no restrictions. Uh, the half-life is very short. It's 11.4 uh, days. And uh, with the alpha particle, you can practically stop our alpha particle just with uh, putting a piece of paper in between. So no the lead person. shields or no, anything nothing of that is nature. Needed. Okay, very um, good. So it, it's safe, uh, not only to the patient, but uh, the family members. Family members. members. Um, as far as uh, we do, tell them to hydrate themselves well, so that way the excretion is faster. Okay. Now, um, since this is introducing radiation into the body. What kind of, are they going to get radiation sickness? Uh, are they going to lose their hair? What no, happens they're not there? going to lose their hair. The side effects are minimum. They may notice some nausea, diarrhea, uh, occasionally uh, peripheral edema, in other words, swelling of their usually legs ankles or, or yeah. ankles. And if that happens, we do tell them to raise their leg, and, legs, and uh, if necessary, we'll give them a mild water pill. Do you pre-medicate them with uh, compazine for no. nausea, or is it, no. it's rare enough that it's you don't have to worry about it? It's rare enough that you don't need to worry about it. Yeah. Uh, same thing with diarrhea. We just tell them to get over-the-counter, you know, Imodium or Pepto-Bismol, and that's sufficient. Uh, they may, they're, one of the side effects is they, it may, it will lower the blood, it may lower the blood counts. How often do we have to check them for uh, the, only the blood counts? Uh, the week before the next injection, you need okay. to check them. And um, as far as uh, the blood count, uh, the hemoglobin could go a little lower. Um, platelets and white cells do not really, you know, go down much. Very rarely you are not able to give the, your next injection because of the lower blood counts. Well, now, Lenny, in your extensive experience, how often have you had to either postpone the next dose of Zofigo mm -hmm. or maybe lower the uh, dose? Is that an option, lower the dose? No, lowering the dosage is not an option. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, you, just in case if their blood counts are low, they're low enough for Zofigo, but not low enough that you need to do any medication. You just wait for a couple of weeks, repeat the blood counts, and do the injection. In about 30 patients that I've done so far, twice we had to postpone the injection. One time the patient as I was getting, getting ready to inject, he says, by the way, I was in the emergency room over the weekend with a chest pain. So we, we did hold off, and we, I wanted to make sure he didn't have any cardiac event that might need cardiac surgery or stents, stenting. And as it turns out, uh, it was a false alarm, so then we brought him back, back next week and did the injection. The other patient did need blood transfusion, but again, uh, was the blood transfusion because of the bone metastasis, which again kind of uh, shuts down or slows down your bone marrow, which is where the, the you know, cells are formed, uh, is not sure. And then we did hold off his uh, injection for about two to three weeks and uh, till he got the blood transfusion. We did repeat the blood counts and then proceeded with the injection. Were there any situations 
in which the patient could not take the full six injections for whatever reason, medical or? Um, one patient I do remember after about four or five injections, his pain did go, uh, go away, but he elected to go on hospice because of uh, his other problems. And that's when we didn't give him the last injection. Oh, now, one of the requirements, and we haven't talked about this so far, is that the cancer, which fortunately in prostate, it loves to go to bone. It's osteophilic. Uh, but uh, are there other circumstances in which a patient might not be eligible because of other spread of cancer? Um, it, uh, as long as they have bone metastasis, but not visceral disease, and by visceral disease I mean it should not have gone to their liver, lung, or any of the internal organs. Uh, if the disease did go to the lymph nodes, as long as it's one lymph node, and the size of that lymph node is no more than five centimeter, they are eligible. Okay. Important uh, quality measure. Mm -hmm. Now, I'd like to talk to you about some of the statistics. How common is prostate cancer in uh, today's society, uh, not only from an incidence standpoint, but as a cause of death? Well, as far as uh, incidence is concerned, the numbers are uh, one in seven men will develop prostate cancer in their lifetime. There are about 160, 165,000 cases yearly are diagnosed. diagnosed. Um, which is prop, I think it's third, more, third or fourth more, most common cancer. In, if you look at it in men, it's third most common. If you yeah. look male and female together, it's a fourth mo most Certainly common cancer. Certainly the number one killer, the one that we can do something about, mm -hmm. is uh, lung cancer, cancer bronchial correct. cancer. I remember one of Dr. Kramer's uh, disciples, Dr. Ralph Dobelbauer, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, 35 years ago, he told me we found a cure for lung cancer. Withhold tobacco at age 10, you know. <laughs> but um, uh, what's the death rate from uh, prostate cancer? Death rate from, uh, on an average, after the diagnosis, um, after, you know, 165,000 cases are diagnosed and the death, is, death rate is about 30,000 close to it. Yeah. Well, I would like to get your recommendations, or at least uh, if you could uh, recount what the American Cancer Society says about prostate cancer and how do you pick it up. It's certainly better to avoid it than to be treating it in the fourth stage. Correct. Uh, cancer, American Cancer Society does recommend uh, starting the screening at age 50 um, for most people. Now, let's say, for example, for African-American, they do recommend starting at 45 because uh, in African-American uh, population, uh, prostate cancer is more aggressive. So even if it's a, typically a PSA of 4 is considered normal, but in African-American, it will be 2.5. Uh, also, if you have um, a number of uh, relatives, first-degree relatives, that have prostate cancer, uh, then you should be screened at age 40 it or 45. It does run in families. This it does run in family. Run in family. And, well. um, and contrary to what uh, insurance companies are now stating that you don't need PSA done after 70, um, I mean, yeah. I'm close I to would, 70 and I consider myself I as would, a fully functional member of the society. That, but, you know, remember when we worked with Dr. Kramer, the cases we saw we're all in stage four. Correct. It was only a rare case, case. that would be uh, stage one, stage two. And now fortunately, because of prostate cancer screening, PSA levels, at Fox Chase, where you see the majority of the patients, you're picking them up in the early stage and you're early going stages. for cure. Yep. Yep. And that's why we're picking them up in such an early stage that one of the treatment options in early stage is active surveillance. Yeah. and not doing any treatment, which, you know, would not happen if you didn't pick them up in exactly. early state. Well, again, I want to welcome you to our staff, and thank you for spending this half hour Thank with you us. so much. Glad to be here. Thanks.